This is a battle at the front, boy. Oh my goodness, 7.84 on the clock, but what a race. 7.84 there from Paul Cannon. Very Fantastic. good run, strong performance. I'm just, I'm still in all the technique. You see the way that man looked? That was steppy. Very clean, refined technically model there on display. For those who don't know, I am a, I'm a, I'm a sucker for good technique, man. I really do. You're a what? I think it's the most beautiful form of art. When I see a sprinter with, you know, fantastic knee lift, great dorsiflexion, front side mechanics. Some people like going to like the Tate Modern and that. I just like seeing people run. I just like going to B Fit Grand Prix. <laughs> I just like going to B Fit. <laughs> So I spend my weekends. This is my art. That is my art. Honestly, it's fantastic. So okay, I'm noticing, so go Rashmon, for it, go sorry for to it. cut you off. No, go for it, man. I'm noticing on the feet of many of the athletes that we've we've seen today, it falls into one of two camps, primarily. Either people are wearing the uh, the new Adidas spikes with the, the foam, or they seem to be wearing the Max Fly spikes, uh, the, you know, the super bouncy the air, bubbles. air bubble Nike spikes, right? Yes, sir. Do you have any thoughts about any of these spikes? Because I know that, you know, the, for example, the Max Fly spikes we, saw, we found out yesterday, the price has gone up on Nike to 225 pounds. Sure. Yeah, um, you know, I've, I've actually only worn the Max Fly Spikes. I've only worn the Max Fly Spikes. Um, to be honest with you, I get it. I get it. You know, you want, you want the best to give you the best chance. Mm. But I don't, I don't think it's that deep. I don't think it's that deep. Um, 225 pounds, you know, this, you can get a discount on that, right? Because if you can't get a discount on that, then... Uh, you can get a discount on it I mean, if Nike you know. has a discount or if you know someone that works there. Yeah, I mean, if you don't know somebody that works at Nike, then paying 225 pounds for spikes. For me, personally, I wouldn't do it, but, you know, so every, we, everybody has their own thing. We do have some parents and some, you know, impressionable athletes that are probably listening to this stream. What advice would you give to the parents of, you know, um, younger athletes starting up in the in the sport? Who you know, when I was starting in the sport, like you can always get spikes from the year before for cheaper. It's just a different color. It's the same spike. Right. Um, maybe not super spikes, but you can get good spikes. So I'd say just go with, with, with that option. Race two. Race two, and most athletes are actually V35 category Ooh. athletes. This is a great run, 7.31 there. Now, you see how both run through the line with, their, with the arms down a little piece? I like that. <laughs> he, he said, yeah, I'm, I'm, not him, I'm him. I'm really him. <laughs> I'd love to see that, 7.31 on the clock. Fantastic. I believe that was David Mould. PB of 728, so very, very local. It's good to know that you're coming into the new indoor season very close to where you've left your previous season. It's always good, it's always reassuring. I guess it, it lets you know that if you've tried it, new things in training or perhaps a new coaching setup or just a new uh, renowned, uh, re reinvigorated sense of, of you know purpose in the sport, it's, it's showing in your results. Definitely, definitely. It's not always the case. Um, sometimes, like some people, like myself included. Is he dying? Ooh. This is Victor, just making sure that we're, you know, looked after. Make sure the mics are, are arriving and ready. Thank you. But as I was saying, um, it doesn't always start like that. Like myself, I'm, I was notorious, and I'm still, I think I was notorious indoors and outdoors as being someone who takes a while to get going, right? I need a couple races to remind myself, oh, this is actually a real thing. Oh, this, the gun means to go. Oh, this is oh, actually... Oh, the gun. Oh, the gun. Now oh, I my go. first step. Oh, now I got to move. <laughs> Deep cut HSI video there for you. Um, but it does take me a while to get going. So I remember um, the season I ran my personal best in the 100, I think I opened up in the 60 in like maybe like two tenths off my PB, something like that. 
and I didn't even get close to my PB in that that season. I don't think. Maybe I got somewhat close to it. Maybe like a, a tenth out. Um, and that whole season for me was a, again. It was just a reminder to okay, cool. We're getting back into the races now. We gotta do this. For sure. Um, but that's, if that's what you are, and that's what. What it do you think? So you know, I think that does happen to a lot of athletes, and yeah. they lose confidence. Yeah. So for you, when you were, you know, opening outside, well outside your PB, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? How did you, you know, not lose the the faith in the work that you've done? It's a very weird situation, but you have to have trust where there is nothing tangible that would suggest trusting, right? Like people say things like blind faith, or if you're a religious person, you know you have faith in, in your maker, you haven't personally met them. Um, and for me, it was about transferring that into having faith in myself. Um, I remember there was a season famously where, 2016 season, right? We went to Loughborough International, and by this point, my personal best was 10.38, and I was like, yeah, you know, I'm gonna run 10.2 next year, easy. And your personal best coming into that season was not, I think it was like 10.5, right? Um. Going into 2016, into the, your World Junior year. No, it was 10.39. 10, 10, 10.39? Yes, it was. Oh, yes, it was. Cool. So, you you come off the back of World Youths. You're like, yeah, I'm going to run fast. And you hit the ground running. And it was fantastic. And myself and another training partner, who I won't mention, who he knows who he is, <laughs> um, were frustrated at our race. And I just kept saying, it will come, it will come, it will come. This took me about four or five races. It took me maybe to June um, until I really hit what I need to. And then the results started rolling in. Not for sure. These are under 11s here, so again, nine and 10 year olds. It's fantastic. Some of those athletes is their first time competing, I can tell because they don't have any PBs down. Not only that, but you can see that they are very well adjusted to this environment. Lee Valley, if you don't know, it's quite an intimidating arena to be in. Um, there's a lot of people. There's literally one side of stands and just eyes looking at you. But they've clearly taken it in stride, pun intended. And wait, the winner of that race, very, very solid run. If you're locked into the live stream, feel free to, you know, Post a little story at the narrative podcast. We'll give you a shout out. Yes, yes, yes. At the narrative, at Rishmal, don't at Rubes. Um, I will not give you a shout out. <laughs> I'm playing. Just checking my um, my mentions now that I have so far. A uh, message from James Arnold, uh, Commonwealth, double Commonwealth athlete, Commonwealth silver medalist from the Gold Coast Games. Uh, legend. Legend, absolute legend in the game. He said this, athletic commentary is hitting new heights whenever Rubes and Reshma are on the mic. Facts. You know, I, I, I don't want to say that we're hitting new heights. I like to say that we're, we're just bringing a new perspective. I don't want to say that we're higher or lower than anyone else, but, you know, I personally would listen to me. And there's certain man I wouldn't listen to. You know? So let's leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> only, uh, only athletics commentator that's better than us is Atto Bolden. Facts. I mean. Facts. I mean, I'm not the one that said it, but I agree with that person. <laughs> <laughs> Got another race going on. Looks like there's three athletes in this heat. That's a fantastic run. Absolutely fantastic one though. Rushmore, at right this age is that they're at, when you're looking at some of these under 13s, under 11s, under 15s, what do you think should be the main focus for these athletes? It's very, it's cliche, but you know, the first thing is actually, do you enjoy it? You know, that's, that's going to take you a long way. Yeah. Um, the second thing is, 
learning to just go out and compete. You know, do you want to have good technique? Yes, but I think it's more important at this stage to get that hunger to win, that drive, right. that desire. Um, I'm just going to, you know, name drop because I can. Mm. I remember Coach Mills, something that he said to me, you know, one of the most important things is the desire. Right, Once right. an athlete doesn't have that desire, it's over. So, 100%. you know, it's important to have that desire to begin with. Right. I agree. I think it all starts at, you know, for a lot of us, sports days and these type of competitions. No, no, I 100% agree. I think you're right in the, the enjoyment and the desire has to be the most important thing. But if I were to, if I were to think of anything else to include... I would say from those times, you, it's very good to have a support network in place. There are going to be days, you know, where today, some days, some people in this, in this building today are going to have the perfect day. They're going to run fast twice, get a PB. It's going to be amazing. And some people aren't. Some people are going to have a tough day. They're going to lose their races. They're going to um, not run as fast as they want to do. They're going to full start. They might get injured. God forbid, we don't want that for anyone, but it could happen. And when these negative things happen in the sport, you've got to ask yourself, who's there for me? Who's there for me, the person, not necessarily you the athletic performance or you the athlete um, and it's important those things will carry you through and um, we hear it all the time you know in like popular rap songs or like in um, in business listening to podcasts and stuff but it's like you know when people get really good that's when people want to be around them for sure um, but it's like who was there for you when you weren't necessarily the best version of yourself who's there supporting you through the times in order for you to get to that version of yourself um, and yes, that, that, that can that can be a coach, that can be a physiotherapist, that can be a nutritionist. Um, but obviously, at the age of eleven, most of those people are your parents. You know, your mom might be your your, your physio. Your mom might be your your nutritionist. Your dad might be you know your coach. Your dad might be um, the person that's you know giving you advice or your sponsor or you know what I mean. These kinds of things. Yeah, so definitely. it's important. And I'm I'm not you know trying to isolate anyone who doesn't have that particular setup in their parenthood. Like, but you know. Who's there for you? It's a, it's a good question to start asking yourself from a quite early age. I definitely agree with that. Especially as someone that did have that support system, definitely goes a very, very long way. Okay, so we're into race 18 now. The combination, actually no, just under 15. Boys. Fairly even there at the start. And you know what though? I don't know if you're saying that technique's not important yet, but you see when I see <laughs> when I see some people with a nice arm swing, you know? Like the arm the arm going backward all the way. Sure. I say from that we can work with that. We can work with that. I agree. That that looks like a great run there. I think that was Jacob Verl. Probably butchered your last name, apologies. But that would be a a big PB, if I'm correct. Again, to start the Maybe year like wrong. that, <laughs> like that, that's good, man. You can't ask for much more. You know, that's, that's, a, that's a very belated Christmas present, but you can hold that. Just to let you guys know, if we do get any of the names wrong, we're working off the unupdated list, so apologies in advance. Also, if we pronounce your name wrong, apologies. Um, yes, but feel free to, to message us do, and let us yeah, know. Do feel free to correct us, respectfully, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't come spicy. Don't be spicy in, in the DMs. Don't be, nice. don't be, uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Lead with love. <laughs> Ooh, you gotta love it here. You gotta love it here.
So this, if I'm correct, is race 19, right, Reg? Race 19, yes. Um, mostly contested by under 17 boys or men. One under 15 in this one. Did you know at 19, I put 19 on Audi? That's wavy. Mm. A few missing in this one too. Yeah, this is what I was going to say about the second round. Hopefully, because I'll be seated off the results of the first round, we won't have these kind of gaps again. A very nice race there. Again, it's going to be affected by the fact that some of these athletes are going to feel very distant from the action just because of the seeding of the lanes and the way that it's shaped out. But they can stay for round two, they won't have that. For sure. For sure. I think the clock flashed up at 7.17 for the winner there. But we shall see. We shall wait and see. If it did, I believe that would probably be a PV. While we are actually actively focusing on the 60 meters, it is nice to see that the long jump is getting some love in the stadium. Ah, uh, for sure. Also, I believe Kessie Oladoy, a friend of ours, was in this competition as well. Great to see him. I caught one of his jumps. You know, great to see him in that event. Yeah, Kessy, an athlete who is seeing success in his primary event last year, the 100 meters, or the sprints rather, um, by diversifying a bit and, you know, taking some time into the long jump. I do think that's a, an avenue that some people might want to consider, not necessarily going into long jump per se, but sometimes when you hyper-specify and, you know, focus on one event for so long, you can get a bit, you know what I mean? It gets a bit stale. You've got to switch up a little bit. Also, you're right in that last race. Um, big PB there. Ooh, Paul Lambrecht, 716. Love 716, that. great PB there. So, congratulations to Paul. Fastest time. And we're off. I'm sorry. Ah, oh, I thought I thought I was seeing a Sean Crawford. I thought he was working with a hat backwards. I was gonna, I was gonna give him all the praise, <laughs> all the accolades. It is. It's a. It looks like a white bandana. Yeah. From where we are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I Oscar really wanted Hall. to be a hat man. <laughs> <laughs> Good run there from Oscar Hall. Maybe the you know, a streamline, holding the hair back, man. Gave him a few yards there at the end. That's that's where I messed up. I wasn't holding my hair back when I was competing. Oh that's man. What it was. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you need um a skull cap, you know, like yeah. I need a kufi. Yeah, man. Yeah, should have raced with kufi. Yeah, just hold everything in. <laughs> the dreads are just all over the place. Yeah, no, what? What? Yeah. But that is a fantastic run. Can you cast your mind back, Rashmo? to your favorite indoor season for yourself? Um, maybe 2000, 2015, to be honest. Yeah? Yeah, that was a great season. Um, what were some of the highlights of your 2015 season? Definitely, I had a race. Um, do you know what? I feel like all the highlights were made by the, back, like, the, the underperformances. Like, you know, mm. there's championships called Cessas. It's basically like o Oakland's dominance. Right. Um, wanted to take the title there. Wasn't able to do that. 
Do you remember South who of the England. Um, Tommy, Tommy Ramdan. Yes. Yeah, yeah. South of England, same thing. I wanted to take the title there. You. <laughs> <laughs> you. <laughs> Took, <laughs> prevented me from doing that. Yeah. England champs, same again. Um, I wanted to get on the podium. Oli Bromby, shout out to him. Got me there as well. And yeah. I wanted to dip under 6-8. And I didn't do that. So, mm. actually, fortunately, you know, you gave me an opportunity to go to meet... Um, in Cardiff at the time and I ran 6.78 which was like fastest time in the world for youth right? Time, fastest, right? yeah fastest time for youth in that year and second fastest of all time for a, a youth as well in the 60 metres so that was definitely a highlight for me to be honest oh, that's fantastic yeah. it's a very very good year I remember being there um, you know for the things I was actually actively there for not in the Cardiff but you know you were working hard in training. I think that was the year that you went to Cuba with your, <laughs> yeah. your with your group. Had a little, little secret training camp away from everyone else. What well, time to be alive? Um, and yeah, just the I don't know if videos of these these championships exist, but just the energy of that indoor under twenty champs at uh, Sheffield. Yeah, that it was, was unmatched. That was great, man. Um, you know we had the defending champ, I believe. No, no, he wasn't defending champ. He. Um, but he was someone who was eyeing the record, OJ Edaburin, who we're going to see later on today uh, at this Lee Valley Beef at me. And, you know, he was by and far the favourite to win. Sure. Um, and it was just about who was going to challenge him the most. You had some people that were, you know, really to do that. The people like myself, people like Theo Etienne, um, Oliver Bromby, yourself, Reshmar Miller. Uh, it was a very, very good... Oh. <laughs> It was a good one to, to be a part of, and I was, I was glad to come away from that with a silver medal. I kind of wanted to win, but, you know, sometimes these things don't line up the way they need to, or the, the way they want, you want them to, rather the way that they need to. No, for sure. For sure. That was, yeah, that was a great time, man. That was a great time, you know. Travelling down there as a team as well, as a college. Yeah. Taking over that whatever holiday in that was. Oh, disgusting. Running around the... Uh, the, the no, not allegedly, people running around going into other people's rooms. Not me, though. I was asleep. Me. Uh, I, needed all, I needed all the rest I could get if I was going to try, <laughs> try and beat man the next day. Uh, coach journeys, you know, legendary stuff. Yeah, man. So you have a, another heat of under 17 men, boys, you know. Is it under, what do you think? Under 17? Your boy. Men or boys? Your boy. You ain't gonna pass 18 yet. <laughs> Your boy. In this one, we have. Um, I don't wanna butcher people's names. <laughs> but. <laughs> Afusa. B for athlete. Clocked 680 in the last meet. That's our su first sub seven clock. First right? sub seven clocking of the day. Okay. Six ninety eight. Okay. I can't call that one. I ain't gonna lie. I'm not going to lie to you. That may have been Aaron Tugwell. Um, if it was, that would be a personal best for him. Personal best. Personal best. First time under. Seven seconds, congratulations. Well done. Very early in the season, I'm very, sure there's more pivotal. to come. Under very 17s as well, that's a very fast time at that age. I think I can speak to some of the barriers that you you know, you know, put on yourself or like try to um, ascend Sure. In the, um, as a, a, a male sprinter in the 60 metres. So, you know, the first one always is to be faster than seven seconds when you get to a certain age. That is a, it's a very, very big barrier. After that, the next barrier is then going under like 680. Start getting some more serious times. Six sevens and that. Then it's like, okay, cool, under six seventy, now you're six six. From there you start looking at people, you start seeing times that you would have seen on like a continental tour meet or yeah. you know, at the senior level of things. Then you know you're 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 in and amongst them. Then yeah. it's about okay, you, are you under six sixty five? Because now it's like you're on the business side of, of six six. Then it's like are you under six sixty? Six anything that's six five and that I think uh, Ian Hodge, who's a statistician for for Great Britain. In sprints, uh, well, across everything, very, very uh, knowledgeable man. But I think he said something along the lines of, you know, 
you, it's very difficult to run a sub 660 and not run a really fast time in the 100. And I think the evidence shows. Um, you know, I know a lot of people that have run six fives in the 60 meters and the slowest time they might have run is like a 10 two and it's under 10 25. So that's when you start looking at these kinds of times and where you fit into them. For sure. Or you can just be me and just run 10 one and not run under 660. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that, 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 that is you. That was a choice. <laughs> that, was, that was a choice I made, right? Just a warning there, green cards. It's so difficulties. Catch a race or snoring, yeah. Um, race 22. First on the 20. Men's heat. And for sure, it's not disappointing. It's looking very quick. This race on the outside. Was that Tom Riddell on the outside? Maybe. Yeah, I'm giving it to, uh, to Tom Riddell on the outside. It's a very, very good race. Maybe, maybe, maybe. And again, being on the outside, and you still do your thing, if you're able to compete on the, out on the outside, yeah. When you get, you know, thrust into the action in the second round, that... Ooh, only serve to elevate your performance again, so for sure, very, very good performance. Rushmore. Sir. Are there any athletes who you're going to have a particular eye on this season, indoors or outdoors or whatever, in the sprints? Is there anyone that you saw last year that was like, did something quite impressive to you or something that you want to keep an eye on going forward? Um, of course, every season, I'm going to have an eye on Chad, Chad Miller. Mm -hmm. Now Jaden Arthur as well. You know, it's just really, for me, to be honest, everybody... The athletes I know. Yeah. You know, because I, I do know, so even that, that extends globally. Mm. Um, you know, some of my friends in Jamaica, Ashani, um, he's actually just started training in Johan Blake's group. Nice. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of people um, that I keep my eye out for. Um, in terms of more athletes that people would know, you know, to be honest, I don't really care about kind of the people people know. Yeah. For me, it's more the people I think are going to emerge and break through. Yeah. That's what's always more exciting for me. The only one I would say is, you know, Elaine Thompson. Mm. My favourite, probably one of my, my favourite athletes of all no. time, you know. I feel you. I um, feel you. I, I personally believe she will become the greatest sprinter when she wins in 2024. So... That's that's my that's my angle. That's your angle. I'm hearing. How about you? Um, I guess I echo the same sentiments that you're saying. Like obviously looking out for the people that we know. Um, so you know that obviously starts at home. So Jade Nava, my little brother, uh, Chad Miller, your little brother. Looking at people like you know the friends that we have and still in the sports. So Anson Plummer still competing. Had a great season last year. I want to see him do more. James Arnold still competing. I want to see him do more. Um, but then it extends a little bit further than that. So, like, you know, former training partners, people I feel like are doing really, really well. People like Lena uh, Nilsson had a really, really good year last year. Three champs did what she needed to do. Um, you know, came up with a very um, pivotal piece of information about her, her sister. She, her, you know, her situation, she didn't need to do that necessarily, but she did. And I hope that it helps other people in similar situations feel more comfortable to come out about theirs. Um, if you don't know, just Google it. Um, 
and then just people that like, just excite me like I just like, like looking at them like ooh what are you going to do like Joe Ferguson in the 200 I said yeah I want to yeah, see what you're sure. going to do um, it would be good to see what Joe does if Charlie Dobson wants to string a, a season together in any event that he chooses it's going to be fantastic to watch um, Alex Haydock Wilson had a fantastic year last year you know what I mean so things definitely. like that I want to just keep see, seeing people come up and do things that I ain't seen before Jeremiah Azu yeah fantastic year yeah. and he's gone in and he's short <laughs> so I'm biased <laughs> Got Joe Appiah in this one, V50 athlete. So the clock didn't want to do what it's meant to do, which is take the time. But all in all, the race looked fantastic. It looked good. It looked competitive more than anything else, which is what you want to see. You want to see people racing and, and racing well. Yeah, it looked like a good competitive race. Difficult one to call, to be honest. Um, But yeah, seeing Joe in there with under 20s and under 17s. Yeah, man, you gotta let man know I can tussle with the best of them. Being a V50 athlete, you know, very impressive. Of course. And that's his second or third race of the day as well. Same. But I think this is that's one of the things that I believe open meets are fantastic for sometimes not all the time but sometimes pick a day pick a couple of events and just absolutely load yourself with races you learn so much in those things and then when it comes to the days we want to be a bit more specific with a particular event that you've chosen then you just say hey i'm not going to do that i'm going to peel it back and just focus on the hundred no, for sure. or just focus on this or just focus on that you know what i mean so for sure yeah why the hell not man sometimes you gotta do that you gotta you gotta run it up literally Very important, muy importante. Have to always uh, shout out the officials. Always, always, always. Without them, none of this happens. No officials, no athletics. No like it. No like it. You know, that's actually a really good point. How old are you right now? 24. 20, you're still a baby. You're actually, you're actually young. You're actually young. 24 years old. 
is still young. And you, you are someone who has a, you have a, like you said, you have a lot of unfinished business in the sport. So if you do want to knuckle down and be serious, Reginald Miller, there's, a, there's always a place for you. I will find someone else to commentate with. <laughs> that speaks to the consistency of the athletes that we're seeing today because they're going and training day in day out to make sure that these things happen. So this is the fastest under 20 men's suit. Oh, I would love to have seen what the no time was on that because that was a beautiful that was race. a beautiful run. I Very I don't well know. executed. Rushman, who's that? Yeah, his model's fantastic. Great technical model there. Sure. I love when you come out your dry phase, you know? A smooth transition, right? Smooth transition, but then it just takes you that extra step forward. Just whoop, whoop. That's good running, man. <laughs> we do love hearing that um, these mics are very sensitive and pick up a lot of conversations because <laughs> someone will call you and they will tell you that they've heard your conversation. Bane. Shout out Bane every time, man. That's, that's, that's your son. Is he gone in? Yeah. Shout out Sean every time, man. Every single time. Sean Safa Entry recruiting, trying to get athletes for Ghana ahead of their um, hosting of the African Games in August. Now, sometimes I reflect on my own career, and obviously I am someone who was born here, but I'm of Ghanaian heritage. And I think I would, if I could go back in time, I might enjoy competing for Ghana, um, especially that. Like, you know. Yeah, um, you know, I do always encourage people if you have a country away from GB to go there um, just go there and be a legend yeah man who knows if I come back in the sport and Sean gets me running like 10-2 10-1 again I'll go run for Ghana <laughs> you're going to need 9 you're going to need that would, that would you're going to need 9 by then it's getting faster wow, the, skiing, Sean's doing it the fire's getting hot Sean, Sean, oh. Sean's doing it don't forget my PBs bro <laughs> that's a start boy this is the first senior men's race. Again, I need Lee Valley to sort out the clock, but the, the races are looking technically good, and you're getting, as we're getting older and older, you're seeing the experience come through. You're seeing how people have honed their technique throughout the years. You're seeing people be a bit more steppy, a bit more frontside, a bit more uh, confident in their models. It's what you want to see as the, the ages go up. It's nice that the under-11s can be here at the same time as the seniors to see these things. You know, we have events like London Indoor Games where the olders and youngers are separated, so you don't necessarily get to see that. But if I were a young athlete, I would benefit a lot from just watching people, how they warm up, how they do their reps, how they do their races, and just taking it for yourself. Definitely. Jesus is Lord. That you ran 6.75. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's putting him in the next race. He's putting him in the senior. That's, is that the you that your dad, you were talking to his dad? Yeah. yeah, he's cold. How old is he? How old is he? The second round, I think, is fast as first. Yeah, Where's TJ? On the, on the thing, it says when it's Listen, don't worry about that. Where's TJ? Don't worry about that. When no, but do you think it's going as fast as first? Just ask him. Now, we'll ask TJ and we'll find out. Go to the, to the window there. And just, just, ask just, just ask TJ. Right, right he's wearing red and he's blue. He's, he's down. <laughs> Sean, go ask him. I'll find out. He's there. Where is it? He's on the, on the, um, on the ramp. The ramp. Oh, no, oh, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, Alicia. You know what time it is, isn't it? Uh -huh. Okay, so things are spicing up right now. Spicy. And um, we had confirmation. Medwin or Danton. Fantastic run from him. Sorry, we were we were in awe of of what we saw. Six seventy five on the clock. Great running. Oh, man. You might even just be coming up. No, I'm about to chat to him. Great execution. Yeah, when you uh, yeah, when you come out, I'm chat to you. Fantastic. I have to look up man on the power of ten. I want to see what he's saying, bro. I can't lie, that was an amazing run. It's ridiculous. Yeah. No, nah, you need to relax. He ran. You know what? That's a PB for him as well. Yeah. He ran. He ran seventy eight last year. Sixty eight. Oh, and that's a that's a PB as well. So great run in there. PB eighth of January. PB 1047 in 100 as well. That's gone. That's gone again. Oh, my bad. Sorry, this, this guy does this. He came third at Bedford. Wait a minute. Was Ward Juniors last year? No. Yeah. Jerome Ward Juniors yeah, last yeah, year? Yeah. 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 He should have been in for the relay, right? He came third. He ran 10 free. How old is he? He came third to Jerome. Who did they take? I don't know. That's the thing. Yeah. Well, I'd, love, I'd love to find out. Yeah, the point is it gets with Team BB. Yeah, yeah. No, you're right. Maybe he was. So we're just using the illustrious power of 10 to profile athletes right now. Yeah. Shout out to power of 10. No, 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 no. No hey, shout out to power of 10. No shout out to power of 10. Revert the shout out to power of yeah, 10. Yeah, it gives, it gives people a complex. We don't want that. We want people to just run fast and enjoy. Messing about. We love you. We love you, power of 10. <laughs> that was worse. That was way worse. <laughs> Underway again with another great heat. Come on, they feel the Harrogate. Great running there from the Enfield man, 705. Yeah, from the outside lane. That's what we like. Again, when you get reseeded, you get put in the fire, that's only going to go down. We are on our We are on race. I believe twenties. Yeah, how many races we got? Uh, so we got three more races, I believe, of the men's sixty meters. We have some time. It seems like Tyree Jones Fisher is still here. Three two one is just come over it. Come over it. Come on. How are you today, my good man? You know what man, I'm tired, bro. It's yeah, coming to this place always takes a long, long time coming from south. Yeah, I apologize for everyone from south uh making their way to literally the other side of the city. But we appreciate your presence here. Thank you. As someone who, you know, would have been competing in these events, you know, a couple couple years ago, how do you feel now that you've transitioned out of the sport a little bit into another sport or other sports, plural? You know what? I think it's tough because like, I've played pro now for a couple of sports mm. and seeing athletics 
I feel like it's got so much potential, mm. but I don't see as much progress as it needs to. Right. I'd say in like 2021, I spent most of my time in and around LSU mm. and around those sort of schools and seeing what they do in the States, seeing what they do in Florida, for example, LSU, as I said. I just feel like we've got so much more catching up to do. There's right. talent here. Remember. It's just for it to be actually looked after, to be honest. But if you could take one thing from you know all the things that you've seen, all the sports that you've been around and implement it in track and field in the UK, what would it be? Stop making excuses. Mm. I feel like one thing that one of my friends and I we've noticed with, with track athletes is, say for example, it's a bad performance. Right. Nobody wants to see 10 paragraphs as to why you didn't perform. <laughs> you know what I mean? You didn't perform, yeah. put your head down, get back to work. Right. You don't need to make any excuses. You don't need to justify your actions for anybody. 100%. You've been working hard. You put in the effort. It's there. It's just mental. That's the only thing stopping you. 100%. I completely agree with you, by the way. Um, we, we don't want to see that. We don't want to see your tweets about, you know, God's timing is the best timing. Because you only say that when it's, you run poorly. For sure. Um, <laughs> but uh, what is there on the horizon for you this year in your sport or apart from you know like you, I think you alluded to it earlier off yeah, mic yeah. with the CFL um, just get into that a little bit for me yeah I so I had an NFL combine um, end of last year mm. and I feel like it went well good but it wasn't it wasn't meant to be at the time okay and so now we're just looking at it from a different angle looking at the CFL the yeah. CFL seems like something that's very very much well it's not as it seems like it is good it's a yeah, very yeah. very good level it's the mm. second biggest league for the sport american yeah. football so if i get my opportunity in to be able to even play in that coming from the uk will be amazing so i'm just working every day towards it fantastic well i look forward to seeing what thank you do this year continue doing what you're doing thank you moving forward like you say you're pushing it forward for not only yourself but people who maybe know you from athletics or people the youngest people that look up to you 100%. and see there's other avenues out of the sport as opposed to just you know competing in the track that's the sad thing i feel like a lot of people they jump into track and then when they leave that's it mm. there's so many other sports that track up you can get to yeah. in my opinion not even my opinion like in sport like speed kills mm. when i was in rugby i wasn't even the fastest in track when i went to rugby i was the fastest in the league yeah so what does that say for all the other guys that actually leave track you could actually end up killing it in other sports, but people don't necessarily know the opportunities. Right. So it's there for people. Mm. Of course, 100%. of course, of course. 100%. But I do think that there's opportunities for people to discover new loves, new mm -hmm. passions. Um, especially if you, you know you, mm -hmm. you can't continue to love something just because you have loved it in the past. You have to continue waking up and loving it sure. as you go. So. But to be fair, good. a lot of people might not love some of the other sports, but they probably love them a bit more than working in an office. So. That is a very good point as well. Very, very good point as well. But I guess everything's for everybody. Not everything's for everybody. One hundred percent different as well. So that's what we like. We love the nuance in sport and the opportunities that people can experience from it. Mm. Thank you very much for your time, man. No, Appreciate thank it, bro. You. Thank you. It's love. Good as. Right but you're getting paid for this, bro. Take your mic. Back. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just, um, I'm just here giving Sean. Safa and to my predictions on this 60 meters. I'm Ooh. just kind of analyzing what's going on on the track right now. Man, I'm doing track analytics. Um, yeah, obviously this person's run three percent faster. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm not a <laughs> stats guy. I'm not. I'm not a stats man. I just look at the mm. art. So, um, no, what? I do think I'm that gonna, we're going to see a very fast I think race we're gonna see, today. I, I think you know we could see six five in the second round, but I think this round. I'm gonna say 62. I'm gonna say 662. Yeah, I'm, I'm giving um, it. I'm, I'm saying. Around 662. I'm saying OJ will happily run under 670. I think we're looking at 664 personally. Newly resurfaced Mondo, you know. Yeah, everyone's saying newly resurfaced new track, Mondo. Uh, this, this will kind of in, give us an indication of the new track. The but only yeah. thing that I am. CJ's track record might be under threat. The only, That's the what only, 653. The only thing that I, I am aware of is, um, with all due respect to the competition. There isn't anybody kind of in that 6-5 region in this race. So sometimes you do need that push to get into that territory, especially on the first round. Yeah, no, you're right. But counterpoint, so, counterpoint, there was no one in Bolt's 9-5 uh, range. If uh, I ran 9-5, I was like, open him or not. So... Listen, listen, no, no, no. So, we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. Tyson Gay ran 9-71 in that race. Yeah. But you got dragged by his back 71 You got dragged no, by his no, back Nobody that running 9-71 is getting dragged anyway. Uh, okay. Okay. No, okay. Bro. You were... <laughs> no, <laughs> no. If I run nine nine, no, I'm gonna explode. Sacrifice, explode. sacrifice their whole family to run nine seventy one. So we're not gonna do that. That's no more. Shout out to Tyson Gay, man. Legend. Who you got in this race, Marishma? So in this race, we have. 
Max Brown, James Hansen, no Joel Pascal, unfortunately. OJ Edeburen. Sorry, is this the last race? Yeah, this is the final race. Ooh. Richard Akinyebo and Krishan Ekin. Just to uh, follow on from a conversation we were having early on about people I want to see, just what they do. Richard Akinyebo is one of those athletes that I saw last year and I was thoroughly impressed. I cannot lie. Um, he's obviously with the BFIT Academy. Um, he was a prominent feature in Bucks, I believe, indoors and outdoors last year. Yeah. Um, you know, very, very solid runs all throughout the season. I think he got hurt towards the end of the year, so we maybe were robbed of things that we could have seen. Um, but it will be good to see what Richard runs here. Yeah. Um, James, James Hansen too. I'm definitely looking forward to see how those two go. I have not seen um, a meet yet where James Hansen has been at that he hasn't run well. And to be fair, I wouldn't be surprised to see, maybe not in this first round, but I wouldn't be surprised if one of those two athletes dipped under the 6-7 mark today. Oh no, 100%. But I, I'm not sure it will be in this round. Well, we're about to see. They're doing a lot of preamble for this race though. You know how it goes for the fastest race of the day. They got reseed that man. No. Second race, second round, they'll reseed it. It looks like something is going on that's giving us a little it's a technical delay. Technical at the um, Krishan seems to be actually totally off the track at the moment. So you definitely won't, won't be able to see him in picture. I'm not sure, maybe he's. All the athletes are actually leaving the track at the moment. So it seems like we're going to have a slight delay. Yeah, tell them put their clothes back on, man. And the anticipation builds. Man, Nobody man wants to out. stand on the line and wait. So, you know, me, I don't know about you, but I personally keep my tracksuit on for as long yeah, as possible. Yeah, until the last minute, until you start shouting at me to take it off. Otherwise, I'm just getting cold for and no you, reason. And even then, I'm walking back slow. Yeah. But that's because you're a menace. I just want to run fast. <laughs> that part. Performance is, is not the timetable. <laughs> So slight issues here. And um, we'll keep you updated when we're updated. So Ruben, wait, did we get an official prediction from you, Ruben, on what time you, you think? On will, this race? Uh, yeah, I think race. Roger's gonna win this race at 664. Okay, think, so that's 664. I think what I've learned from watching, I watch a lot of athletics passively and actively um, when I'm around these competitions. How can you passively watch athletics? Like when it's on the background and I'm playing FIFA. <laughs> <laughs> but like when, I, when I've seen OJ in particular compete last year, sometimes his first round he gets caught lacking or he's not maybe as, as warm as he wants to be. But his second round is always fire. That happened. But I think if, if, if we had, you know, the likes of Sean Saffir and in this race. Yeah. Then maybe we, we'd see. I mean, you can say that. Fireworks. But I mean, I've seen races. I watched races last year where he raced Harry, uh, Aiken Zarita, he raced, raced Yuji Namadazi. These are athletes of that kind of caliber. And, and, and he, he say what? <laughs> Sean Savergi, if I raced here today, I would take the world lead. First of all, it's the 8th of January. So I don't know how impressive the world lead is. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right now. <laughs> Wait, when are you running? But yeah, no, you got a little bit more to cook left and then you can go. No, he's, he's, he's got hurt. He's got hurt. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. God's time is better than no man's I time. get out. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, we would love to see what you do when the okay, time so comes. So the through. athletes re emerging. Track. Always a mainstay in the indoor the circuit. Going out there. Yeah. Back in for everyone. We'd love to see it. So I'm not. Because Sean has track pulled out. Right? Athlon. That, which uh, may be the case. Yeah, I own a few tracks. Yeah, you own a few tracks. Mm. I, feel, I feel like you have the one in Athlon. Maybe no, Sue took it. I think, yeah, Bing, Tan, Bing Chan Su took your record there. But I know you got records somewhere else, so it'd be nice to see you go out and, and defend the records. <sighs> it's that time! It seems wrong that you don't have the record at this track. Uh, it's quite unfortunate, but you know, <laughs> things happen. It makes me want to work harder, so I can't complain. Who owns this track? Chichin Liu owns this track. Who owns the outdoor track? OJ. Does he? 10 15. 10 15. Okay, so just to confirm, Krishan has pulled out. He was on the line, so I'm not sure what's happened there. We are underway. All four athletes in their blocks. Okay, so it's fairly even up until this point. 6.75 Six, seven, Six, on the clock. There on the clock. Looks like that's a win for OJ Deburn. 
Richard Akinyeba was right there. Richard, we didn't know Richard he was right there. So, you know, very solid good open run up. there. Very, very solid open up. You open up in and around a couple steps outside your personal best. It's fine. Again, we have to stress this is the 8th of January. We do not need people running fast but right also now. As well, you it's know, a long season. It's, it is frustrating when I'm not sure what did happen at the start there, but those kind of things are very frustrating.